I'm talking to Tamara about Star Trek Discovery on CBS All Access. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am excited. I loved Star Trek Discovery. What did you think of when they told you that you were going to be working on such an iconic new addition to the series? Well, I came in mid-series, so I was... Um, I, I was reluctant to come on because it's such a big deal as a designer, like there's so much there. But when I saw the sets, uh, the ones that I didn't design, but I was, I was seduced. I was definitely seduced and blown away. So it's really fun being a part of that and continuing the great designs that I got to play with. So, so what was your favorite design that you did for the show? Uh, I think it must have been the Terran Empire. Empire. The black universe, the, you know, the mirror universe where we did a lot of stuff to the existing ships was fun too because we played around with a lot of black plexi and mirrored surfaces. But the Terran was really my first big foray into the Star Trek world. And I, and I got to do something completely different using brutalist architecture as the base and playing with forms and, and set extensions with VFX. So it was, I was pretty happy with that. Now, just sort of get the idea for the mirror, uh, mirror to get the idea and inspiration for the Mirror Universe episodes, did you watch the original Star Trek to get an idea of how it looked in that and then a modern imagination of what it will look like because we realize this Star Trek takes place before the original Star Trek. Yeah, except that now we have all this technology to build these incredible sets so of course we have to play with all our toys. So whereas it is sort of, it does predate it, we, we did want to present something visually that was exciting and new and different and CNC cutting and laser printing and all of those texts that we can use now, we're using them. Um, for the Mirror Universe, yeah, for sure I watched the original series, um, which I probably hadn't watched since I was a kid. Um, and, uh, you know, we definitely drew from them. So the whole logo design that we did for the Terran logo, we, we basically copied it and then made it, you know, three-dimensional and added all kinds of layers and bells and whistles that they didn't have then. I think in the original series, they took the Terran logo and they just plunked it on a wall in a couple of spots. And now we're like, we were putting it on the floor and we were making big, uh, you know, three-dimensional hanging pieces, so banners, all kinds of things. It looked really great, and I have to say, I had a regular HD TV, and then I upgraded to a 4K TV, and wow, yeah. the difference was amazing. I could see much, so much more of the detail. Yeah. How did you guys sort of, did you guys have in mind how it would look on 4K TVs, HD TVs, and people were still using regular old-fashioned TVs? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing about um, production design, you know, t film versus television these days, there's really the detail that you have to put into a feature film, you have to put it into a television show because you just see so much with the HD and the, all the new technology. So, uh, yeah, we were sort of planning for everything. I mean, it's a, it's a tough thing to do. The finishes on the show are uh, glossy finishes and mm -hmm. just any, th any little nick show. So it's a constant battle. And we have a great set of painters and carpenters who are working with us trying to make these things that don't look like they're made in a carpentry shop but they, are. they looked so good and I was looking at the show and I was like oh my gosh this looks like they're putting some serious money and time in it did you have any constraints working with CBS All Access for for their show that is sort of the calling card for everyone to join CBS All Access uh, no I think we had enough money to do what we wanted to do you know so you always want more money because you want to do build more things but within the within the realm of what we're doing you know in this season we've gone back to some of the main standing sets and we've expanded in a few places I won't tell you where you'll have to watch the show and added a few things some new corridors that I'm pretty excited about because we didn't have enough to sort of do traveling shots so that'll be you'll see that coming up in season two my gosh, I'm so excited about it. It was such a blast working on it. And growing up, it sounds like you watched the original Star Trek. Did you watch any of the other uh, incarnations? A little bit. A little bit of Next Generation. Um, and then, of course, you know, I had to watch some more because Jonathan Frakes came and was directing with us, so which was a real pleasure. Uh, and I think uh, it, was the, it was so exciting for us to have him. Uh, he came on our sets, and he was, oh, my, there are roofs. <laughs> He said roofs, not ceilings. They're roofs. And I was like, oh, great, Mr. Frakes, they're ceilings, first off. And he's like, well, we didn't really have them on Next Gen. So, yeah, so it was kind of like he was blown away. It was nice to see that, 
his level of excitement for the design of the sets. And working with such a large cast, have you worked on shows where you had this many people, this many extras? And does it make a difference when you're um, working to create a set when you have that many people touching and using, so you have to make it more um, uh, able to withstand that much touching, that much yeah. stepping, that much just uh, moving it around? Yeah, it's, it's not it's not so much just the cast and the extras it's the crew too with all their equipment and stuff uh, yeah so we have really have to pay attention to making things you know last and hearty and and you know when we're designing sets we're always making ways for the crew to get in and out so walls that fly away magically that you don't see and cameras can go there um, but yeah there's it's it's a high traffic zone uh, we're constantly cleaning it so we can keep it shiny and spit and polish there's a lot of that and uh, everybody works really hard to make it look like it's always kind of a little bit brand new because it still is but maybe maybe this year will be a little more there'll be a little more of a patina a little more age on it because it's season two so and I know you'll be reusing the ship but are there any other sets that you'll be using or did they give you guys little trinkets to commemorate the first year well, I can't talk about any new sets exactly. Uh, there's, a, there's a few hints in the air, so I don't know. We've been, we've been working on something. Um, but we know, like with the existing sets, as I was saying, we are, we are doing improvements. And uh, not that they weren't awesome to start with. And, you know, we've still kept pieces of the sarcophagus ship, which, of course, blew up. So... Uh, you know, if uh, we used those last year in some of the, the Klingon sets, and uh, you know, so I don't, I don't personally like to throw anything away because you never know what's going to come back. Well, congratulations on the show. It looks great. I've really enjoyed watching it. Thank you. Well, keep watching it. So I'll be subscribing, keeping my subscription to CBS All Access so I can watch more and we watch the entire show again on my 4K TV because once again, 4K. wow, it's it was like really good. It was like I had an HD TV before. Right. I have a new Samsung uh, 4K and it's unbelievably how bright awesome. and shiny and sharp. I can really see the smaller details. Yeah. I had no idea that it, made, it would make that yeah. big a difference yeah. on watching the show. Great. Well, continue to enjoy it. It really shows all the hard work you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a okay. great afternoon. Okay. Thanks.